Hello everybody, my name is Zohri Choudhury and today we'll talk about water, sanitation and hygiene, WASH, and this is a global topic. According to WHO and UNICEF, by 2017, 2.1 billion people lacked access to safely managed drinking water services and 4.5 billion people lacked safely managed sanitation services. Unsafe hygiene practices are widespread, compounding the effects on people's health. The impact on child mortality rates is devastating with more than 340,000 children under five who die annually from diarrheal diseases due to poor sanitation, poor hygiene, or unsafe drinking water. That is more than 800 deaths per day. WASH is the acronym for Water, Sanitation, and Hygiene. Due to their interdependent nature, these three core issues are grouped together to represent a growing sector, while each a separate field of work, each is dependent on the presence of the other. For example, without toilets, water sources become contaminated. Without clean water, basic hygiene practices are not possible. In here, uh, we are showing a map from 2004. Even though this map from WHO is slightly old, it depicts the death that can be attributable to water, sanitation, and hygiene in children aged under five years all over the world. Based on the chart, we can see that all over Africa, there are many children where the number of death from diarrheal diseases are highest in the world. This shows how important it is to improve availability to clean water and promote safe sanitation and hygiene practices in order to save the lives of many people. In here, we are showing an, a more updated uh, statistics from UN Water, uh, which is the United Nations Interagency Coordination Mechanism for Freshwater Related Issues, including sanitation. This slide shows the water sanitation and hygiene related progress made up to 2015. This table lists examples of improved and unimproved facility uh, types. Please be sure you are able to identify which ones are improved and which ones are unimproved sources. For example, for the, uh, under the water, a person without access to improved drinking water, for example, from a protected borehole well or municipal pipe supply, is forced to rely on sources such as surface water, unprotected and possibly contaminated wells, or vendors selling water of unverifiable source and quality. For many communities, water sources are usually far from their homes, and it typically falls to women and girls to spend much of their time and energy fetching water, a task which often exposes them to attack from men and even wild animals. Under sanitation, without improved sanitation, a facility that safely separates human waste from human contact and people have no choice but use inadequate communal latrines or to practice open defecation. In the immediate environment, exposed fecal matter will be transferred back into people's food and water resources, helping to spread serious diseases such as cholera. Beyond the community, the lack of effective waste disposal, disposal or sewage systems can contaminate ecosystems and contribute to disease pandemics. For the case of hygiene, in some parts of the world, there is little or no awareness of good hygiene practices and their role is reducing in reducing the spread of disease. However, it is often the case that even when people do have knowledge of good hygiene behavior, they lack the soap, safe water, and washing facilities they need to make positive changes to protect themselves and their communities. Here you can see several photos of households storing water carrying water and uh, from a source as well as bathing 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 outdoor or indoor the WHO UNICEF joint program or JMP for water supply and sanitation was a was established in 1990 
Since then, the JMP has produced regular estimates of global, regional, and national progress on drinking water, sanitation, and hygiene, or WASH. Improved drinking water is defined as a type of water source that by nature of its construction or through active intervention, it is likely to be protected from outside contamination, in particular from contamination with fecal matter. As seen in the top two charts, global coverage of improved drinking water sources has increased globally from 1990 to 2015. However, significant disparities persist between rural and urban areas. The regions with the largest gaps are Oceania, which is Australia, New Zealand, and the related islands, and Sub-Saharan Africa. Globally, eight out of 10 people without improved drinking water live in rural areas and nearly half of them live in sub-Saharan Africa. The most deprived are still using untreated surface waters, waters like lakes and rivers. Many of those deprived communities are located in remote, hard to reach areas. Therefore, rural water supply will remain a challenge for many national governments and their development partners in the coming decade. Safety of drinking water is a growing concern in many parts of the world. Drinking water sources are increasingly under threat from contamination, which has impacts not only on the human health, but also on the economic, environmental, and social development of communities and nations. Threats to drinking water quality include unsafe handling and storage at the household, such as water drawn from safe sources may be contaminated by the time it reaches home and is ultimately consumed in the household. In addition to this, there is the threat of contamination of water sources, both naturally occurring from and from pollution. Water contaminated with arsenic and fluoride threaten the health of millions in certain countries. Water that has been, water that has been in contact with human feces is a major cause of disease, including diarrhea. In some areas of the world, the availability of water is scarce. Poor governance, environmental degradation, over-extraction and climate change are further diminishing already scarce freshwater resources. The best way to address contamination of drinking water is by preventing it from happening in the first place. Water safety planning is an approach that helps communities and service providers understand and manage contamination risks and is increasingly being applied to new and rehabilitated water points. Water safety planning also helps to identify the necessary control measures communities can take to protect their water from becoming contaminated from such things as poorly constructed or located toilets. Well-constructed toilets help prevent the contamination of water supplies. Regular hand washing after defecation and before handling water, water minimizes the risk that dirty water, the dirty hands contaminate water used in the home. For these reasons, it is important to stress, to stress sanitation and hygiene as an important line of defense for protecting drinking water from fecal contamination. Household water treatment, for example, chlorination or filtration, along with improved water storage and handling, is another control measure to ensure safe water use inside households. This chart from the World Health Organization depicts the proportion of population using improved drinking water sources in percentages all over the world in 2015. Please remember that improved drinking water is defined as a type of water source that by nature of its construction or through active intervention, it is likely to be protected from outside contamination, in particular from contamination with fecal matter. Based on this chart, we can see that most of the world is already using improved drinking water sources. 41 countries still have a significant fraction of the population continued to use unimproved drinking water sources. These are mainly concentrated in sub-Saharan African countries, but are also found in several other regions. In seven countries, Angola, Kenya, Madagascar, Papua New Guinea, Sierra Leone, South Sudan, and Tajikistan. Many people still rely on water collected directly from rivers, lakes, and irrigation canals for drinking, 
which causes these people to face increased risks of health and well-being. This chart from the World Health Organization depicts the proportion of population using improved sanitation facilities in percentage all over the world for the year 2015. Improved sanitation includes connection to public sewers or septic systems, poor flush latrines, pit latrines, and ventilated uh, improved pit latrines, which are an improved sanitation compared to unimproved facilities such as bucket latrines, um, public latrines, and open pit latrines. Based on the chart, we can see that most of North America Europe, Australia, and western parts of South America and northern parts of Africa are using improved sanitation. On the other hand, we can see that most of sub-Saharan Africa and parts of South Asia still have less than 50% of the population living without improved sanitation facilities. Sanitation is essential to the survival and development of children. Currently, there are 2.4 billion people worldwide who do not use improved sanitation, a facility that safely separates human waste from human contact. One in seven people, or 946 million people, go in the open fields, forests, open bodies of water, or other open spaces. And this practice is known as open defecation. And as a result, they're not using toilets. Of those who do um, use open defecation, nine out of 10 live in rural areas. It is incredibly dangerous as contact with human waste can cause diseases such as cholera, typhoid, hepatitis, polio, diarrhea, worm infestation, and as well as undernutrition. While progress has been made to improve access to sanitation in some parts of the world, millions of children in poor and rural areas have been left behind Five countries, India, Indonesia, Nigeria, Ethiopia, Pakistan, account for 75% of open defecation. Globally, India has the largest number of people still defecating in the open. More than 564 million people in India still defecate in the open. In this slide, we are, we are seeing some photos from various countries showing children washing hands. One of the biggest challenges to ending open defecation is not just providing clean and safe toilets, but changing the behavior of entire communities. In order to end open defecation, it is important to generate awareness, share information, and to spur behavior change in an effort to bridge the gap between building toilets and their proper usage. Good hygiene practices, especially hand washing with soap, um, as a, is a good practice. Although it sounds simple, this act is essential to prevent disease and health of children. Something as simple as hand washing can save lives. Washing hands with soap at critical times, like after going to the toilet or before eating, can save a significant, can have a significant impact on children's health. Good hygiene practices reduce the incidence of diseases such as pneumonia, trachoma, scabies, skin and eye infections, and diarrhea-related diseases like cholera and dysentery. Research shows that regular hand washing with soap can reduce the number of incidence of diarrhea, a disease which can be deadly for children by around 50%. Education and communication are important components to promote hygiene. However, education alone does not necessarily result in improved practices. Promoting behavioral change is a gradual process that involves working uh, closely with communities, studying existing beliefs, defining motivation strategies, des uh, designing appropriate communication tools, and finally, encouraging practical steps toward towards positive practices. In here we are seeing UNICEF's 2016 to 2030 WASH strategic framework. The WASH strategy's uh, objectives are, by 2030, achieve universal and equitable access to safe and affordable drinking water for all, and number two, by 2030, achieve access to adequate and equitable sanitation and hygiene for all and end open defecation, paying special attention to the needs of women and girls and those 
in vulnerable situations. These objectives align with the Sustainable Development Goal number six for drinking, which states that um, that uh, the drinking water, sanitation, and hygiene should be available for all. The Sustainable Development Goals, or the SDGs, are a set of 17 goals to guide global development to 2030. Goal number six, again, is about ensuring the availability and sustainable, sustainable management of water sanitation for all. Achieving universal access by 2030 will be especially challenging for the 41 countries where over one-fifth of the population continue to use unimproved drinking water sources. These are mainly concentrated in Sub-Saharan Africa, but also are found in several other regions as well. That will be the big challenge in the next decade. So let's do some quick concept checks. According to WHO UNICEF, a household with safely managed drinking water service is defined as... E. Drinking water from an, from an improved water source which is located on premises, available when needed and free of fecal and harmful chemical contamination. Another quick concept check. The term WASH is used, is used to refer to water sanitation and hygiene. True. Thank you.